before you buy anything online. You probably check those online reviews to see what other consumers have to say. But we know that companies often put up fake reviews praising themselves. Now the New York Times reports that some companies pay customers to praise their products. Financial contributor Carmen Wong Ulrich is here to bring us up to date on that. And I was curious. Number one, I have to be honest with you. I didn't know that companies did that, that they put up fake reviews. Because sure. I'm sitting there reading it. I did. Uh, me, who's a sucker for an infomercial, but I didn't know that the companies, <laughs> legit companies, would do that. And how common is the practice, I guess, it's is my question. It's very common. It's incredibly common. As much as, you know, celebrities tweeting uh, the products that they like. You know, here's the thing the Times uncovered basically a manufacturer was offering financial incentives to folks to offer, to put down five star reviews for the cover for an Amazon Kindle. Now, up to about 300 reviews were up, and basically, let me give you an example. What they would do is, the, the, the piece actually costs $59.99. They would end up giving you a rebate, so it only costs $10. And here's an example of what they'd ask you to do. Mm -hmm. They would say, we will refund your order in exchange for a review. We strive to earn 100% perfect five-star reviews from you. Now, this is a very fine line that a lot of folks kind of are on because the FTC really tried to crack down on this, especially back in 2009, because there's a big difference between editorial, of course, and right. advertorial. And you must disclose, it's against the law, if you do not disclose that there's a relationship between the person reviewing and the vendor. I think that's so misleading. It, it is. So, so that, you mentioned this, this fine line with the FTC. So typically, as, as we're learning, p people are starting to realize that sometimes the reviews they see may not be on the up and up and maybe there could have been some incentive how but how prevalent is it do we know uh, we we do know but here's the thing is the question of is it's so prevalent the FTC has, has trouble just enough manpower to kind of crack down on this it's really up to the consumer it's up to us to pay attention to these reviews and see and try to find out and discover what's real now Cornell did a study and found that really on average we can only attribute maybe 50 to 60 percent of fake reviews as fake so we're mm. not that great at wow. it but there are things that you can do and look out for to make sure that these are hopefully not fake reviews. For example, you can click on the reviewer's name to see what other reviews they have out there. Now, if they reviewed also five different types of stoves, the chances are they probably don't have five stoves, so that can be mm -hmm. the assessment. Also, the timestamp. You want to see when these reviews were put up. If they were all put up within the five minutes, maybe it's a whole office putting them up. So you want to be very careful about that. And look at the language. If the language oh. is just so effusive, and especially if it's something exclamation like point, a, a $10 point. you know, yes. brush, and it's like, oh, this is the best thing in the world, you really got to watch out for the language. And if there's absolutely no downside to it, chances are it's probably not legit. Well, I had an interesting thing over Christmas. I was shopping, and I'm always looking for a sale. And I just tweeted, just left Banana Republic, everything's... 40% uh, off, and people said, shame on you, Gail, for not saying that you're a right. spokesperson for Banana Republic. Right. And my thing was, look, I was just trying to help you out with Christmas shopping. Uh, unfortunately, so, yeah, every, it's, now we're cynical, aren't we? We are. I do think it's wrong for people to be paid spokesmen and not admit to it. So if I was, I would have told you. So do we have a foolproof way, Carmen, to make sure that the person really is just John Q. Public saying, you know, I really did like Erica's necklace and Erica's dress today. I love Erica's necklace. And I'm not, and I'm not a paid spokesman <laughs> well, for you. Erica or Thank her you, necklace. Thank you, ladies. Exactly. I mean, is there a way to do that? Not really. That's the thing, is that we can't really separate. It's the responsibility of both the person putting up the review and the company to disclose. And it is against the law, for example, if you did that and you didn't disclose that Banana Republic was paying you. Mm -hmm. So it makes us cynical because I'd love to post reviews that I'm happy about certain yes. products, but yes. people think that we are being paid to do so. Here's what you need to do. Go to real editorial sources. For example, CBS Marketplace. Mm -hmm. You can go in and look for reviews. CNET, electronic reviews. Also, Consumer Reports is a nonprofit. They cannot accept money in exchange for reviews. So you want to go to very legitimate editorial sources. And you know what, too? Check out your friends and family. Get offline, especially if you're buying a big product, and say, what do you think of this? Have you have any experience with this brand? And kind of it's call the things together. It's time consuming, Carmen, what you're saying. Go online and look up so-and-so. If you're spending several hundred bucks on appliance, you might want to take time. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carmen.